What is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Rocket Vlogs. My name is Braden Carlson and I just flew my new Punisher, my 2.6 inch Wildman Punisher, the Rocket Vlogs edition one. And uh, I know what you're thinking, wouldn't it make more sense at the beginning of this video that you're talking about the rocket to have the rocket in hand? Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. We'll get into that. First, let me show you the flight. Punisher, 2.6 inch Punisher, K800 something. David Reese made it for me. Um, first person to fly the Punisher with basically my name on it. So I guess otherwise it'd be kind of dumb if that wasn't the case. Uh, it should go like 13 and a half thousand feet. Let's see how it does. From Tinkerville, California, it's gonna fly the Punisher RV. It is seven pound rocket gonna fly on a David Reese propellant. Uh, what? A David Reese propellant research motor. It's a K832. 1700 new seconds burn time in three seconds. Um, it has a Blue J ejection device and, oh, an easy mate. Uh, main shoot took about 900 feet. This should be a great flight. Pad 53, ready? Let's do this. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, launch. Okay, so after the flight, uh, I cut the camera off because there was nothing really to see. Took off pretty quick, awesome boost on a five grain K motor that my friend David made for me. Thanks David, if you're watching this. Um, it was really cool. Basically it was a cause and slow motor and uh, yeah, pretty sweet. I was expecting about 13 and a half thousand feet and uh, Taylor was tracking it for me so I could record it and after Apogee, uh, we got a beep from the tracker that got louder. It was just an RDF tracker, no GPS on it, um, which usually indicates that the tracker's out. And then it disappeared. The tracker signal was just gone. Which, if you're familiar with the podcast, the Anti Gravity Group podcast, you're probably also familiar with the concept that we talk about a lot, wherein if your tracker is working and then suddenly it's not, typically that means the rocket's in the ground but it didn't seem like enough time for the rocket to have come in ballistic. So we were just kind of at a loss. Matt and Taylor, so thanks again to Matt and Taylor if you see this too for going out on your little adventure trying to find my rocket so I could stay back and film all the Cloudburst stuff. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't get anything. So uh, Cloudburst Argonia Cup's two day launch. That night I posted in the Cloudbusters Facebook group that my rocket was missing. And if anybody finds it, to go ahead and bring it back. Just some wishful thinking that someone might stumble on it. Ah, fortunately, this happened. Somebody found the nose cone and the parachute and importantly, the electronics bay. So, we've got data. Kinda sounded like the AOL guy when I said that. You've got data. Decided to wait till I got home to pull all the data and uh, We've got some interesting stuff in here. So first, let's take a look at the data from the Featherweight Blue Jay. Uh, if you're not familiar, the Featherweight Blue Jay is the new small uh, altimeter from Featherweight. Do I have one in this box? No, but I did a video about it. So if you want to find out more info about the Blue Jay, go check it out. And here's what the data recovery looks like. So the Blue Jay says we achieved an altitude of 12,962 feet, which makes sense. A max speed of 1,511 feet per second. That's pretty good. That's pretty quick. Um, the rocket handled it just fine, as you'd expect. It's a Punisher. It can take whatever you throw at it, basically. But we did run into some interesting stuff here. At Apogee, when the rocket's uh, ejection charges fired, and all four charges did fire, they were still attached to the electronics bay. And uh, as I suspected, actually, I forgot to mention, the antenna got ripped off the tracker. That's why we lost the tracker signal. The antenna's gone. Um, and... I also, that tracker had an interesting little battery fit issue that kind of required me to use aluminum foil to get the batteries to contact properly. If that, if you run into that situation, don't do that. Uh, that could have been why we lost the tracker signal up the top as well. It just rattled it hard enough that the battery contact was gone again. I've since sent the tracker into the manufacturer. 
to see uh, if they can fix it, because I believe it also hit the ground really hard at some point or was blown up. I can't remember. That tracker's been through a lot, just like most of my stuff. Anyway, 262.8 feet per second of horizontal velocity. There was probably some pretty high winds aloft, and I pretty confidently assume so, given that there was pretty high winds not aloft on the ground. We were looking at about 15 mile an hour winds, so it weathercocked pretty hard when it took off, which I was expecting. 262.8 feet per second. The inertial navigation max out is actually a really cool feature this altimeter has. It predicts if you were flying perfectly straight up, how high it would have gone? 13,547 feet. So uh, that was a good estimate for me um, on the overall altitude. But here's where things get interesting. So it knows it fired the drogue charge. And that's the period that it's supposed to be under drogue. So, uh, I said the altimeter to have a back of the it exceeds 200 feet per second on descent to pan and fire the main, which is an awesome feature that the Blue Jay and the Blue Raven both have. However, it didn't work. Um, it says the drogue descent rate was 538.5 feet per second. Yeah. Stew on that one for a second. Um, interestingly, the main shoot descent rate was 51.7 feet per second. Yeah, that's quite a bit faster than it should be as well. Hmm, let's see what else we've got in here. And I believe the, uh, there was a, um, a time under main, which I believe, uh, maybe it's in the Altus Metrum data, it was like 8.9 seconds. So... If you're good at deducing data, uh, you probably can already see what I think happened here. But let's take a look at the uh, Altus Metrum data just to, just to get a good idea. Do you see the problem yet? For those unaware of what you're looking at, that is a graph charting altitude versus time. And if you're familiar with how rockets and parachutes work, one might assume that you're not really supposed to have a perfect arc representing that the down was the same speed as the up. And looking at the Altus Metrum data here, we can see under flight statistics, there it is, that the main was 8.9 seconds, and we had 39.4 seconds of drogue time. If you look at that graph again, you'll see that red line is the voltage to the main charge. The easy mini that this data came from was the backup. It was set to throw or fire the backup charge, 200 feet lower than the Blue Jay. You see the arc end and level off as if a parachute came out and then the main drop. It's because the main charge on the Blue Jay fired first, which leads me to the conclusion that most likely what happened here was the rocket was coming in ballistic, presumably because the horizontal velocity couldn't be overcome by the charges, even though I had a gram and a half backup charge in there, which is quite a spicy charge for a rocket this small. Um, and I think what happened was it was coming in ballistic and the main charges, despite the extremely high descent rate, uh, drogue descent rate, according to the easy mini is also 315 feet per second. It's a pretty big discrepancy between the two 200 change feet per second. There's a lot of difference in speed. However, it still seems to be a pretty clear indicator that the drogue was not separated or at least not separated fully. I talked to David about whether he thinks that the rocket could streamline and come in that fast or um, the shock cord is all still there. They ripped it off the motor mount tube. Um, so the whole fin can in the motor case is gone at the moment. Um, I asked him if he thinks that with that gone, if the nose cone itself could streamline and sort of stabilize because it was pulling the shock cord down, and if that would be enough to achieve these levels of speed, 315 feet per second seems extremely fast, even for terminal velocity of the nose cone falling sideways with the shock cord trailing off of it. So it really seems to be that the, uh, the rocket was coming in ballistic for whatever reason, and then the main charges saved it, which is pretty nuts. I've, I've heard of this happening. Um, my four inch Wildman Punisher, if you'll remember, also came in ballistic. I also think that was because of the horizontal velocity at Apogee. Uh, there's some altimeter stuff in there. That was my fault. If you want to know more about that, go listen to the AGG podcast episode about our biggest mistakes in rocketry. Cause I laid it all out for you there. 
most of the rocket's gone. The electronics and tracker are back. The tracker's sent in for repairs. Uh, hopefully, I might just end up having to buy another one, but we got it back at least. Both the altimeters seem to be perfectly fine. Pulled all the data. Everything seems good. I'll upload the Easy Mini data to a Google Drive folder and put it on and put it in the description if you want to open it in the Alt OS program and take a look at the data and see if you find something that I didn't. By all means, please uh, please do some investigating if you feel so inclined. Uh, but yeah, evidently we were running into a uh, ballistic issue that would explain why the main parachute was only out for 8.9 seconds because from the time charge fired to um, blowing everything apart and tangling up in a big mess, parachute actually catching any wind, uh, you can see it's a, it's a bit of a disaster. And also a couple of the shroud lines are ripped, which also sort of seems to indicate that it came apart while it was moving quite quickly. That's what all the data seems to be pointing to in my head. If you think is something different, I'd love to hear all the opinions. Drop in the comments what you think happened. Um, here's hoping that because it appears that the rocket was only about 800 feet off the ground when this all came to a head. End deployment. Nice. Clever. Um, that the fin can didn't have time to streamline. Hopefully it just tumbled down and landed in the dirt and someone's going to stumble on it. Hopefully not run it through a combine. Um, but yeah, thank you to everybody at Cloudbusters for running an awesome launch for one, but all the people who, uh, were out there kicking around. If you, uh, I didn't even get the name of the guy who found this part of the rocket. I was just so excited to try and figure out what happened. So thank you. If you're watching for finding that for me and, uh, FinCan's MIA at the moment, and hopefully we get it back. Um, don't forget if you want a 2.6 inch Punisher, the Rocket Vlogs edition, and you want to hopefully not lose it and fly it better than I do, I might advise maybe strategically attaching the shock board a little bit better. Uh, in case you run into a situation like this, you shouldn't, it shouldn't be an issue, but uh, a good option since it doesn't require internal fillets is to slide that forward centering ring up and put a loop around the motor tube and tie that off above the top centering ring. Usually I put a knot below the rear centering ring, but because it's such a small amount of space between a 54 millimeter motor tube and a 2.6 uh, airframe, there's not really room to tie a knot in the Kevlar, but yeah, I mean, pretty sick acceleration. We looked at uh, acceleration was 19.2 G's according to the accelerometer on the Blue Jay or uh, 27.26 G's if you believe the uh, barrel based data from the Easy Mini. Uh, as cool as that is for that to be way more, I think the accelerometer data is a little bit better. Another good indicator of uh, the main parachute coming out late and, and just kind of letting it hit the ground pretty hard is that it says it pulled 48.4 G's on landing. Uh, so over twice what we saw an acceleration of five grain K motor. So either way, we've got part of the rocket back. Hopefully the other part is okay and someone's going to find it. Um, still Mach 1.1, super hard acceleration on the five grain K motor, 13,000 feet in the wind, no problem. The 2.6 Punisher, is as sick as I was hoping it is. Don't forget though, if you want to get one, you only have till the end of the month of April to purchase one with the discount code Rocket Vlogs. That's one word, all caps. You get the whole bundle deal for $250 instead of $299.99. Also, don't forget these t-shirts. The pre-order is over. I decided to change up the way I'm doing it a little bit. So uh, those that ordered them in March are still going to get them in April. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting on the company to do digital proofing. I had to make some adjustments. So we're going to hopefully see them before April ends so I can get them shipped out. I'm sorry. I know I told you they'd be delivered in April. That was my plan. But as usual, something has to come up, right? However, what also changed is that I have ordered an amount of shirts the pre-orders are gone. So what is on the website right now is what is available. Once that size is sold out, it's sold out and they are never coming back. So this is your last chance to get one of these. And you have until the end of the month buy this t-shirt or I just put up some awesome postcards with an onboard picture from my rocket from BlackRock from 47,000 feet. And there will be some new stickers coming soon as well. Every dollar you spend on the website, rocketvlogs.com, uh, you get one entry per dollar to win the L3 Dream giveaway, which is a Wildman Extreme Wildman, a 75 millimeter aero pack retainer, shock cord, a $100 Wildman gift card. Go check that out. Thank you guys for being here. 
Uh, my name is Braden Carlson. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Uh, if you want to follow me on socials, please do. Big B one zero one one, pretty much across the board. Namely, Instagram is what I'm going to be found on the most. Um, and if you like cars, go check out my car channel, Rev Reflection, because I'm posting more on that uh, pretty soon as well. And go check out the Anti Gravity Group YouTube channel. I know. I'm sorry. I just keep spitting everything out. If you want to support the channel. Click join below the full Cloudburst Argonica videos up with zero ads all in one part for $1.99 on YouTube or $1 on patreon.com slash Rocky Vlogs. You can watch the whole video without ads as well as become part of the behind the scenes effort where you can see all the stuff I'm working on and get podcast episodes early. And uh, there's a Discord group if you're a Patreon member or channel supporter as well. And we just have nice chats about who's working on what in there. And uh, it's a good time for everybody. So you want to help support the channel, check that out. Names rolling across the screen for all the people who are Patreon supporters or channel members. If you want to support the channel in other ways, all you got to do, press the like button. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on. And uh, I will see you next time. Peace out.